A fuel cell is a device that takes oxygen gas and hydrogen gas and combines them to make electricity. The electricity generated can be used to power cars or buses or homes or large office buildings or really whatever needs electricity. So in this lesson, we're going to look at the chemistry and physics behind how fuel cells actually work. So fuel cells rely on this fundamental principle of chemistry, that hydrogen gas and oxygen gas can come together and combine to form water. And these guys want to do that so badly. They're like 16-year-old boys and 16-year-old girls at summer camp who will do everything in their power to come together and form couples. So fuel cells exploit this fiery passion that exists between hydrogen and oxygen, and they exploit this fiery passion to make electricity. Here's how. So parts of a fuel cell. If we could blow one up, magnify it very large, we'd see that on one side there's the anode. The anode is where the hydrogen gas lives, and each one of these circles here represent a molecule of hydrogen. So keeping with our analogy, we can consider the anode to be the boy's camp of the fuel cell. Now on the other side of the fuel cell is the girl's camp. It's the cathode where the oxygen gas, the, these representing molecules of oxygen gas, where they live. Now, all these guys want to do is come together and start hooking up. So, just like in camp, there would be a forest or a fence between the boys' camp and girls' camp. In a fuel cell, there's a barrier that prevents these guys from combining, and it's called the electrolyte. So, what ends up happening here? Well, we can't, we can't underestimate our 16-year-olds. I mean, they'll do whatever they need to to get to the other sexist camp. And that might mean staying out every single night after curfew or hiking for five miles through the woods so that they can secretly rendezvous. Similarly, the hydrogen molecules here have a plan for how they're going to get past the barrier into the girls' camp. Here's how it works. As it turns out, what I'm drawing here is a molecule of hydrogen gas. It's actually a posse. Okay? It's a posse of four things. There are two protons in this posse, and there are two electrons in this posse. And the hydrogen gas realizes that if the posse separates, if they break apart temporarily, they can better make it across the barrier, and then they can reform on the other side and go storm the girls' camp. So here's what happens. There's another element of a fuel cell called a catalyst. And what the catalyst does is uh, it assists the hydrogen in breaking apart into the constitutive members of its posse. So here's what happens. The hydrogen gas here comes in contact with a catalyst. And what, is it, what it does is it breaks apart into two electrons and two protons. These two protons are like the super skinny kids. And it turns out that they can squeeze right through the electrolyte the way really skinny kids could squeeze through the slats of a fence or maybe crawl right under it. The electrons here, they're not quite so lucky. They're like the chunky kid who always eats the extra candy bar, you know, hides it in his dorm because the camp won't let him have it. And they're not able to fit through the fence. So what they have to do is they have to take the cow path that goes all the way around the back of the camp, around the fence, around the forest, and then run all the way back here to meet up with their friends on the other side. So they've got to take the cow path all the way along to the side of the camp, and this guy does too, and then they meet up here on the other side, four of them there, and the posse reforms. And now we have a hydrogen on the other side when they come back together. So that's basically how fuel cell works. You may be wondering, where does the electricity come from? I'll show you. Remember that electricity means the movement of electrons. And so what happens here is when this hydrogen contacts the catalyst and breaks apart into the four 
members that make up its posse. Since the protons can go right across, the electrons have to flow along this path in order to meet back up with them on the other side. And it's this flow of electrons, one posse after another, breaking apart, and the electrons moving to meet up with the protons on the other side. It's that movement of electrons that is what makes the electricity. We're making an analogy to the electrons running along a path. In a fuel cell, there are electrons moving along a wire. And that's where our electricity comes from. So the electrons move over here. The protons have already squeezed through. Four of them on this side. They come back together and make a hydrogen. And there it is. So the posse reforms on this side. And now, finally, they can storm the girls' dorm. These hydrogens and oxygens can combine, start hooking up, and make H2O, which is water, the product of hydrogen gas and oxygen gas coming together. So this H2O here, this is the exhaust from the fuel cell, totally clean. You could drink it. So there's no soot, there's no carbon dioxide, there is no sulfur dioxide, any of these noxious fumes that are pollutants and are harmful and are often associated uh, with exhaust from, from cars and buses and stuff like that. So, just to review, fuel cells create water, a clean exhaust source, and they use the movement of electrons from anode to cathode, from the boy's dorm to the girl's dorm, in order to generate electricity. So that's how fuel cell works.